Welcome everyone. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So um, a few housekeeping items first before we get started with the presentation this afternoon. Um, first, we ask that you keep your microphones on mute until you need to ask a question. We're going to save all the questions until the end of the presentation, and you can also enter your questions in the chat and we'll work through those at the end as well. Um, we are recording this session and Judith has um, provided her slides to the conference host, so those will be available after the conference. Um, so today's presentation is Texas Learn OER, and our presenter is Judith Sebesta. She's the Executive Director for the Digital Higher Education Consortium of Texas. Welcome. Thank you so much, Shannon. I appreciate it. And Carl, thank you for your assistance with this session. And I see that Christina is here in attendance. So I want to give a shout out to Christina because we've had some communications across the country. So, so glad you could attend, Christina. And we will have plenty of time for Q&A after. As a matter of fact, I don't think we'll need the whole time that we have here for the session. But I'd like to say howdy from Austin, Texas. And as Shannon mentioned, I'm Judith Sebesta. I serve as the Executive Director of the Digital Higher Education Consortium of Texas. We support digital education, including OER, at all 50 public community college districts in Texas. And I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to share information about the training we developed, Texas Learn OER. First, I'll provide some background on its development, and then I'll give a quick tour of the training. Then finally, I'll briefly talk about how it can be adapted to any local context, including in Michigan, and plans for Texas Learn OER 2.0. And as I mentioned, we will have plenty of time for questions at the end, so feel free to put them in the chat, or if you can unmute yourself, I think we would have plenty of time if you wanted to ask them that way, verbally. But before I begin, I would like to take just a moment to set the scene. Oh, I happen to have my trusty guitar by my side. So if you'll indulge me, I'd like to sing a, call, a song called Texas by Cindy Walker. Texas. T-E-X-A-S, Texas, that's where this old cowboy's heart is, I got the Texas blues, Waco, Dallas, Houston, El Paso, Fort Worth and Old Amarillo, the messages are getting through. With my sweet senor, where the San Antonio River flows, Texas, T E X A S, Texas. That's where this old palace heart is. I got the Texas balloons. Well, thanks for letting me share a little bit of our Texas music with you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Let me go ahead and move forward into the presentation. Texas Learn OER was created by the amazing Carrie Gitz. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Shannon, who serves as the head librarian and associate professor at Austin Community College, and she developed it on contract for Digitex. And I wanna make it clear that we did compensate her for this work that she did for us. Now, ACC Learn, on which Digitex was built, was created by Gitz for her capstone project for the 2018 to 2019 Spark Open Education Leadership Program. If you're not familiar with that program, I highly recommend you checking it out. It, it creates a cohort that looks into, OE, you know, kind of learns about what OER is, but then everyone creates a uh, capstone project for it. And that was how Carrie created ACC Learn OER. But also, Texas Learn OER was adapted in response to a recommendation that grew out of our 2019 statewide OER survey that we developed in conjunction with our state higher ed agency and the Institute for the Study of Knowledge Management and Education. Let me just drop a link to that final report for that survey in case you're interested in checking it out. Let me drop that into the chat here. And we are in the process of completing our second biannual statewide survey, the 2021 survey, that report will be coming out uh, early in the fall. So stay tuned for that. We'll get that out on all the listservs that we can. 
Kerry built ACC Learn and Texas Learn OER on as a Google Doc originally, and then created a Google site, a, a Google website. Um, so here is the uh, URL for Texas Learn OER. It's openly licensed CC BY, the most open license that there is, and anyone can access this. Anyone can take the training. It's completely free. And as I'll talk about later, can be adapted to any context. And I will drop that URL here into the chat, but I'll do that towards the end as well of the um, presentation. So you've got that. There we go. And here you can see a, um, a screenshot of the homepage of Texas Learn OER. So let's go ahead. Oh, before I do though, delve into that, let me just give a shout out to our peer reviewers. Texas Learn OER was rigorously peer reviewed by both the state and a national group of peer reviewers. And you can see those listed here. So I wanna give them their thanks for their efforts to uh, help us ensure the quality of this training. And they also, again, I like to emphasize this, they were compensated financially for their labor. We do believe at Digitex that that's very, very important. So diving into the training then, get rid of that there. Uh, this is the homepage of Texas Learn OER, and you can see that the training itself in general has a set of learning outcomes that you can see at the bottom of the page, but each module also has learning outcomes for the modules. And there on the left, you can see the menu that guides you, helps you navigate through the training and the various topics that are included within Texas OER from this introduction to understanding it, to, to learning about why OER, why advocate for it, why do it. Um, there's a, a module on open licensing and then later on it delves more deeply into Creative Commons licensing. You can find information about finding and evaluating OER, accessibility, adapting, creating, and sharing OER. There's a specific module on OER in Texas. And there's a final assessment that you can take to earn a certificate. I'll, be, I'll come back to that in a little more detail. But just to dive into a, a, some examples um, throughout these modules, you can see that in module three, we have a section on benefits for faculty. And I like to show this because it, it gives an example of the fact that there are video that are integrated throughout um, and all of those videos are also openly licensed. We did not actually create the videos in this training. We hope to do that in the future, but these have been borrowed from other OER experts across the country. And there's an increasing amount of amazing resources that you can draw on for things like this. We also include a section on benefits for students, and I'm not showing it here, but there's a section on benefits for institutions as well. In that same module, there is a section on equity and openness. And as I'll mention later, because equity is becoming increasingly crucial, important to higher education in general, although it's always been a part of open education as uh, Angela uh, spoke about in her amazing keynote just before this presentation, um, we're going to be working to integrate, or we are currently working to in integrate equity throughout. Um, and so uh, we, we're gonna have that for the next iteration of Texas Learn OER. Then in module five, as I mentioned, there's information about finding and evaluating OER. Here's a nice list of some OER repositories, um, places where you can find open textbooks. It's not by any means meant to be exhaustive, but includes some of the more commonly used ones like OER Commons and Skills Commons, open textbook library, open stacks, uh, et cetera. We have also include a, um, actually several evaluating OER checklists. This one happens to be one from Affordable Learning Georgia. It's a great checklist. Digitex has developed one for our uses that we also include a link to, and there's some other links to other checklists that we include. They tend to be fairly similar though. Then in module eight, we have some examples of OER created by Texas faculty across the state. Again, this is by no means an exhausted list, and, um, but it does include some really nice examples of what faculty have been doing. The earliest ones, uh, well, a lot of the earliest ones were created as a part of the Achieving the Dream grant. Several, I believe it was five Texas community colleges participated in that grant and developed materials as a result of that. That's really most of these listed, I think all of these listed here participated in that grant. Then I'm, yeah, I'm pleased to say that we have had 152 individuals earn certificates so far, 
from 12 states. There's only 10 listed here, including Michigan. Um, Christina, I think, is one of those who has, has done this and completed it. Uh, but, but most recently, I discovered that there were uh, two additional states. And also, we're so excited that Texas, or yeah, hi, Christina. Yeah, there you go. Um, we're so excited to learn that we've gone global, that we have a completer in Khartoum, um, Africa, in the Sudan. So we're, we're thrilled about that. And we're um, really getting increasingly amount of uptick, partly, I think, because I've been coming to a lot of these wonderful regional and, and state events to, to kind of shill this training. And I think we've gotten some uptake from that. So that's been really, really nice. Um, I think I might, you know, I think I might have skipped over. Let's see. No, I didn't. Um, I, I accidentally left out a slide that uh, does talk about the fact that you can earn a certificate for completing Texas Learn OER. And I apologize that I, for some reason, left that out of this presentation. Uh, the, it's the, the final module gives, gives an assessment that you can take, that anyone can take. It does not cost, cost anything to earn the certificate. And you move through a set of questions. And then in order to earn the certificate of completion, you have to earn an 80% or higher on the assessment, but it is not high stakes. You can take the assessment as many times as you want in order to get that 80% or higher and to earn that certificate of completion for the training. So never fear, not high stakes at all. And then let me get to something that's really applicable to you in Michigan and anyone else who is uh, tuning in from um, places maybe outside of Michigan. But as I mentioned, Texas Learn OER has been openly licensed by the most open license CC BY or with the most open license CC BY. So it can be adapted to any local context by anyone. And I have had conversations with Christina about her group in Michigan uh, uh, working to potentially adapt Texas Learn OER for that. And maybe um, uh, after I finish here, maybe Mich Christina wanted to say, any, say something about that, but I don't want to put her on the spot about it. But here's a couple of examples that I've learned about recently from Northern Virginia Community College. They've created their OER starter, starter kit for faculty. And in Oklahoma, their online consortium has created open educational resources, basics and beyond. And I will I'll tell you what, right now I'm going to drop those links into chat. So that's I think I've got plenty of time to do that. So you can see, get those examples there. And there may be, there, there, we know there are others out there. This is not an exhaustive list, but there may even be more than we know about. Um, we're very, always very interested to hear how you're using Texas Learn OER. And it also just because we're, we're legislatively fundated primarily. So obviously we collect data on our, our initiatives and the success of our initiatives and the impact of them. So we're always interested to hear about te how Texas Learn OER is being utilized so that we can pass that on to the legislature regarding our funding so we can get refunded every we biennium our legislature meets every two years and so we're funded on the biennium so it's always a little bit nerve-wracking um, a little bit before this time each at the end of each two years but we did get refunded for the next biennium i am very pleased to say What's next for Texas Learn OER? Well, we are just about wrapping up our work on Texas Learn OER 2.0, again, with Carrie Gitch. She's been working with us on uh, this new iteration of the training. It's going to have, as you can see, enhanced content on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Instead of just the summative assessment that we have, this version is going to include uh, knowledge checks at the end of each module. So they'll, they'll be automatically um, scored, uh, but you can kind of see how you're doing throughout the different modules. It's going to have updated information on OER in Texas because our legislature passed some legislation this most recent session that's related to inclusive access and uh, really um, transparency related to that. So it's not directly about OER, but I think it's very, um, very important and very good protective legislation that is obviously tangential or, or does affect OER, I believe. And plans for increased discoverability um, so that we can ensure that we're getting the word out about this. And this iteration won't have it, but we're going to start working on some additional video content that we are going to produce and create ourselves. It will be focused probably largely on Texas and showcasing Texas OER, but we might have some more broader content for those videos as well. So just checking on my time here, Shannon, it looks like we've got plenty of time and that's all I have for my formal presentation. Uh, let me just drop that link once again for anyone who might've come after when I dropped it before for the URL here, but you'll also have the slides so you can um, see, it, see it a little bit later, but please check it out when you get a chance. 
always love to get feedback on this training. We don't have a formal process for that yet. We're hopefully going to build in a sort of a kind of feedback form, a Google form into the end of it for this iteration. But please feel free to email me if you have any thoughts about Texas Learn OER. And we'll be getting the word out about 2.0, um, but this, this uh, URL will still work for that. So, so never fear. Um, so Shannon, let me turn it back to you. Hey, thanks, Judith. Thanks very much. Um, so we're open for questions. Um, if anyone has questions, feel free to unmute yourself or you could add it to the chat as well. And Christina, you're welcome to say anything too. <laughs> so hello. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we did make use of the Texas Learn OER here in Michigan, and we will be presenting on that tomorrow at 1215. So um, tune in to find out more. Oh, Christina, I want to almost sing a song about that. But yeah, I'm we will be singing. Um, unfortunately, we did not think to <laughs> include song, but we still have time. I guess we could <laughs> throw something in at the beginning. Um, that probably. I look forward to that, though, Christina. That's wonderful. I can't wait to hear more during that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, we, um, we used the Texas OER um, as a base for the Michigan um, set of modules. Um, and we worked with it very closely. Um, I mean, we'll talk about it tomorrow, but we chose the Texas OER over some others that we were looking at because we uh, appreciated the layout of it and the um, accessibility of it. Like it was very um, down to earth language and uh, we liked the, the, the tone that it set um, and it was very, friendly, I guess, and we wanted to keep that tone. So oh, yeah, find out more tomorrow. That's very gratifying to hear. And I'll pass your words on to Carrie because I yeah, really want awesome. to say that this 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 couldn't have been done without Carrie Gitz. And um, you know, it really largely is her work and her product. So that I'll pass that on. But I can't wait to hear more Christina. Yeah, thank yeah, yeah. You. Thank you. So you mentioned um the community colleges, Judith, so are all the community colleges in Texas um, taking part in OER sort of at the same level? Or is there some context you can provide about community no. colleges in Texas for us? No, I would say I would say not. They are so based on our OER survey that we've conducted twice. It's clear that community colleges are participating more than the four year institutions in Texas are. So there 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 is more involvement. And, you know, I have to say that having, um, you know, led this organization that supports community colleges. And I've learned that innovation at community colleges is that it's really synonymous. Um, they really have been on the cutting edge of so many innovations in higher ed. And, and I say that having been in the four-year realm before this, I was a professor for many years and I was always at four-year institutions, but have gained a great appreciation for the work community colleges do in leading my organization. So, um, but you know, I would say that, I would say participation, this is, yeah, this is really quite anecdotal, but among our, our 50 districts is, is, I would say a majority of them are, but only that. So I would say it's a, it would be more like 50 to 60% of the colleges are really act, you know, it, working actively to, imp, to begin working on it, begin implementing it. They have implemented it. Some of them like, like Austin Community College really have just very full um, uh, OER work with many, many courses and programs that are, are fully OER that are ZTC degrees. So, but it really ranges. And there's, you know, to my knowledge, there are some that, that are, they're just in the nascent phases of beginning to explore this as a way to support their students. And, and a number of those are the smaller rural colleges that simply haven't had the resources. Um, and particularly as, as the pandemic, Shannon, as we all know, as the pandemic has, has happened and continues to happen, their, their attention has been elsewhere as they have increasingly become interested in OER to support their students digitally in terms of equity, um, so that's a good question, Shannon. It, you know, we're such a huge state and really, you know, with, with, with 50 districts and um, it's really, I think it comes down to now 60, 60, 60 community colleges within all those districts. You can imagine there's a wide range of things that happen <laughs> across those campuses. So, yeah, quite a bit. Other questions from anyone that's joined us today? Um, chat here. I had, well, I have more questions. 
I have another question that's just about, you know, back to that context of how this is working in Texas. Is the money that you have from the state um, that you hope to be, you know, have renewed every two years, does that help support the faculty's development of it? Is that mainly what it's going to? The faculty development of OER? Yeah. No. no. Oh, okay. We do not. Um, we, our state higher education agency, the Higher Education Coordinating Board, they have funds from the legislature, partially their care funds most recently, um, your, your funds specifically, mm -hmm. that, that provide uh, grants for faculty to develop OER. Um, however, Shannon, I will say, and I think this might be a hot topic with some of you, if, if you are at community colleges, we did attempt to, we allocated $20,000 this past spring to attempt to create and implement an OER grant program specifically for career and technical education to support the development of those. We didn't get a single application. At the same time, the coordinating board, our state higher ed agency, they had funds specifically for that, and they didn't get a single application either. So where we're at now is, so that was kind of our first foray into wanting to use our state funds to assist faculty in developing specifically for CTE programs. We are with the coordinating board and with ISCME, again, our partner on that state survey, we're gonna conduct a needs analysis and figure out why, is it because they don't need them? I'm quite certain that's not the truth, that students, because we know, we've, we've done some research that suggests that there's very common textbooks that are used in say welding, welding programs. They're expensive. A lot of programs use them. They're very, very expensive because they have a lot of images and diagrams. So we think there's a need out there. We think that there are you know, other reasons that very legitimate reasons why faculty may not be able to, to do that. Um, so we're gonna conduct this needs analysis and then maybe come back next year and use our funds and the coordinating board will as well to create those. But our funds, our legislative funding has created, has gone to develop Texas Learn OER. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm pointing that way because that's where Texas Learn OER on our screen is. <laughs> Would y'all do that with your two screens? You're like, wow, what she's pointing at. It could be her dog over there or something. But um, and and you know, we do hope that we continue to get funded so that we continue to um, to continue, continue to continuously improve Texas Learn OER and to provide stipends for Carrie as she works on it, as well as for our peer reviewers. Uh, and, and we also are very committed to assisting any institutions that might anywhere, not just in Texas, that might want assistance with adapting this and localizing it. We've had a number of folks, for instance, ask, what do you use for the certificate? That's not a Google site thing. And we use a plugin called Certifying. So we will help work with them if they need assistance in, in creating their own assessment um, in, in certify them or, or, you know, kind of assistance in creating their own module nine that's focused on their state specifically. So we're, we're very committed to providing any kind of assistance in that way that we can. I will vouch Other for questions? that because we had questions and we did reach out to Judith and she was um, very generous with oh. her um, comments and suggestions and we ended up using certify him too, as you will oh, find out tomorrow. Um, and uh, yeah, you were very open and friendly. So um, we appreciated that very much. You'll get a shout out tomorrow too. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> Thanks, Christina. I appreciate that. You know, it's the beauty of this community, of the open community. That's I have, I'm so grateful that I get to work within this community. We, we, have, we have a number of other initiatives, by the way, we support course sharing across our state with a partnership with a private company called Acadium. We also uh, lead our Texas Quality Matters Consortium. And we engage in research broadly conceived related to digital education. So we do have a number of initiatives, but I do have to say I'm a little bit biased that OER um, is kind of Oh, well, this is being recorded, but it, it, it's one of the favorite things that I get to do in my job, let me say that. And it is this community, this open community that I've found to be so generous in the work that they do. So it's just, for me, it's just giving, it's, and for my organization, it's giving back for all the things that we've gotten from this community. So thanks for saying that, Christina. Oh, Thomas Reed said just recently did training in OER, though through LibreTex, and they have great training, Thomas. So thanks for, thanks for saying that. Um, did not know Texas was heavily invested. It's fairly recent in Texas. It, 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 it kind of, I would say, got on, got on Texas's radar largely around 2015. Uh, the, the Texas legislature became interested in it, and uh, they, they really, to their credit, 
can't credit them for a number of things these days. Um, <laughs> hello, critical race theory legislation. Okay, that's all I'll say. <laughs> Thomas, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm a progressive in a state that is red. So, um, but that's, that's all I'll say about that. Uh, but I, I, I will credit the legislature for allocating significant funds um, in 2015 and then the following legislative session in 20. Um, well, that, yeah, yeah, in the following legislative session for OER grants um, and for a uh, study for creating an OER repository. We now have a repository, OER Text. It's, it's a micro hub of OER Commons. So we're, there's really been a lot of OER uptake and you can't underestimate the work the community colleges did with the Achieving the Dream grants to create ZTC degrees in Texas. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, Veronica here, let me look at your comment. Many of our CTE programs incorporate OER into courses at Alamo College District in San Antonio. Outstanding, Veronica. So glad, so glad to have you here. Um, it may be important to share the existence of these grants to scale these efforts. No kidding, um, that it is, it is so true. I bet all of us um, are aware of that. But Veronica, so it's nice to have a fellow, fellow um, that, that just, yeah, yeah, someone who, a person who, a fellow person who's aware of Alamo Colleges and what they're doing. Anything else? Are there questions from anyone? Um, unmute yourself or put something in chat. Either one's fine. We have plenty of time. It's always good to hear um, that it's everything shareable. It makes everything easy. We don't need to reinvent anything. Yeah, so. I was at a, a leadership institute two years ago, uh, 2019, how quaint, at uh, Odessa Community College. And I, it seemed like a very aggressive school. How, uh, any idea how, how much they've adopted OER? They have fairly significantly, Ronald. That's, that's, uh, I, that's what I would assume. They've had some changes in their OER leadership on that campus, I know, but because they were one of the schools that participated in the Achieving the Dream grant, I do believe, they, they've they been a leader in the field in Texas, so yes. Okay, that is <laughs> Yeah. I, I'm really, it's very gratifying because this is a small but mighty group. You're one of the more engaged groups that I've presented to in my tour that I've been doing virtually across the country to <laughs> to plug Texas Learn OER. So I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I've, I've kind of been um, spending a lot of time looking at the Texas Learn OER site. And this is uh, really great information. I really very much appreciate it. My uh, well, Thank you, Chris. I'm at, I am at uh, Genuine State Community College, and we are working on doing a, a history OER for our two um, U.S. history courses, modern and early U.S. U.S. history, and oh, so you. we've been trying to, yeah, we've been trying to, you know, get our resources together and everything like that. But I think one of the things that we've been, we're hoping to get out of this, and I think this provides a lot of this, is just some of these foundations of, of definitions and giving us a clearer picture of like what OER is and what we kind of need to be doing in order to create the materials. But I think we know we have some of the materials. It's just this idea of how exactly do we to put them in this in an OER format. So that oh, sure. have them. And so I think that's that's what I've been kind of looking through in these different modules. And so I'm definitely going to share this with the rest of my my group that it's going to be just a quick and easy way to go through and kind of get some of those um, kind of main ideas about OER, defining OER. So I think that's going to be extremely useful for us. So I very much appreciate this. Chris, thank you. That Again, it's very gratifying to hear that. You know, one of the modules that was maybe the most difficult for us was our Creative Commons licensing module because of how complicated licensing OER can be. Uh, and, and we really went kind of round and round about how much detail we went, in, we went into. But, you know, largely we, you know, we, we, we erred on the side of not too much information because of the level of this training. We're talking about maybe the next iteration 3.0 being, we're gonna divide it into two trainings. Chris, kind of a, you know, what you mentioned, kind of an OER basics, and then a more advanced that would have more information about Creative Commons licensing, public domain, um, copyright in general. But for this training, we decided to more point towards Creative Commons. They have a wonderful certificate program. Uh, what I say wonderful, the most rigorous course I've ever taken, and I have a PhD, 
<laughs> and it was, I don't know if anyone else here has done it, but it is their Creative Commons. I don't know about the librarian course, but this was for educators. It is rigorous, rigorous, rigorous. And I still feel like there's so much I need to learn about Creative Commons licensing. That can really be a barrier for a lot of people. It's just not understanding the various things, you know, the, the uh, difference between um, non, you know, non, no derivatives, um, non-commercial, uh, share alike, et cetera, et cetera. That can be a barrier, um, I would say. But I hope, you know, hopefully we have strike a nice balance in the training of providing enough information for starters and then pointing to other resources if folks need them. But, you know, Ronald, you brought up the, the, the subject of how we, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We all, you know, it's wonderful that we can share all of this. But, you know, then kind of the other side of that coin, as, as I've, I've been in the field for a number of years now, is... Let's not reinvent the wheel, people. That you know, it's it's hard to know everything that's out there, and I am seeing a lot of reinventing of the wheel, and I get a little frustrated, you know. But but it's hard to know. It's there's not a single source that is aggregating all of the content out there, either be it for training like this or for textbooks and, and other resources for students. So I do fear there's that as as these resources are proliferating, that we are reinventing the wheel quite a bit. Ronald, what do you do you have any thoughts on that? How can we avoid that? <laughs> I don't know, but what, but I am looking for something that I haven't really seen. And that's I, I teach physics, okay, and, and for uh -huh. physics and chemistry, we use a lot of online homework. And with that online, that online homework is really what keeps it because they those those programs aren't cheap, and so they keep some of those courses from being OER courses. So yeah. even if even if we get, I like, say, the open stack text. Yeah. yeah, online homework is definitely not OER. It's the ancillaries, right? That faculty come to rely on that they don't have the opportunity to develop them themselves. Uh, the you know the time, the find the resources, the you know what have you, and and that that's a not insignificant barrier to OER adoption for a lot. And and that is one thing that we've heard from some of our CTE faculty, Ronald, is that. Uh, you know, I we heard from a welding faculty member who said there's there's technical manuals out there that I rely on that come from professional organizations that would be incredibly difficult to to duplicate to recreate. They include assessments that we that we use. Uh, they include a lot of diagrams, a lot of interactive you know, trainings for and and it just it, it and physics I think is a technical field. Not to mention you know needing to 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 update the content. Right. Quite frequently, potentially. Um, I don't know if that's the case. If I bow down to you because physics was like the one subject <laughs> in college I could become an A in. I, <laughs> but, but it's, you know, it's a very, it can, it can be, yeah, complicated to update those things too. Because, because yeah, because somebody would have to, you know, if they wanted to develop this on their own, would, they would be generating thousand, you know, a thousand questions or, right. or, or problems or 2,000, maybe it might be a couple thousand thinking about some of the, some of the textbooks. And I'm trying to figure out how, you know, somebody's not going, I don't think somebody's going to do that on their own. And curious. how do you, so, and what do you do? So you're opening, you open, li openly license them. Well, do you want your students to be able to access them? Maybe, but not always. So that has been something that I've been very interested uh, to, to hear about in the field is what do you do about those openly licensed test questions? Uh, I just saw something come across, I think it was maybe the CCC OER listserv or maybe WCET where, where someone um, said that they were creating questions, but is it okay if they, I think it was WCET, is it okay if they're putting them behind a password protected area of a database? I think it was either the LMS or a library database because they, they only want faculty to get them, but yet they're, they're openly licensed. So is that okay? I don't know. I'm, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's That's complicated. <laughs> but but you know I truly believe in in the the philosophy behind open op, the open movement is that knowledge should be open, and that perhaps we need to be moving towards assessments that doesn't matter if the student has them or not you know more authentic assessments and but that's that's a whole other it's a whole other thing right right. Do we have some other questions? Stacey? Yeah, I, just, I wanted to make a comment. So I met Ferris State University in, in Big Rapids, Michigan. And um, and one of, we have a lot of specialty programs like welding and uh, rubber technology. And we have the pharmacy program and we have an optometry program. So we have a, some more unusual or things that aren't at, at a lot of other places. Um, 
And we had a learning community um, where we kind of did a tiered approach where we like the first one was about and just what is OER, like find a review, kind of moving on to potentially creating content. So we've done this in the past and um, and it was compensated too, just so you know, they got like a little stipend. But um, that was the biggest push is that they really can't really are dependent on those ancillary materials, particularly the test questions. So the test questions, the PowerPoints, the, um, you know, this, just that material and that's, and that's really, really, and we, and we can back that with surveys we did with our students, which is why did you buy the course code? Because the teacher wanted the, 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 the PowerPoints and the tests. They didn't really do anything with the, the textbook material. They just used the those material, the things that, that are hard to do correct, you know, hard to do well. So I mean I empathize with them, but um I'm a librarian, I should say. So so you know, so I you know, so I understand that totally, but it was frustrating too because it was like people were really reluctant to to move um move on because of those and especially for some of those niche. At the same time we had people who um, we're creating like, um, now I just forgot what it, we would call it, like case study manuals, you know, for, for health, because we have a lot of health programs. So come up in, coming up with open access case studies, um, things like that. So, but I will say I work with the social work department. And one of the things that their profession is doing as a professional organization is trying to work on writing textbooks, open access textbooks that can be used by um, coming from that professional perspective from their um, their association that can be used oh, across the country. That because, is great. You know, everybody needs, a, you know, social work methods. Everybody needs, you know, you mean like it's, there's a lot of standard material. And even the one that's like state, state specific about agencies and, and pride laws, you know, kind of almost think of it as a loose leaf where you tear out the piece, you know, put in the section you need, take out the section you don't working on that. So luckily for them, social work or social justice is a huge part of their own mission and values. So that equity piece is, is probably what pushed them into trying to do this as a profession. So that's one way to think about it too. So that's very impressive. Thanks so much for sharing that. You know, it, it makes me think of um, uh, the most recently um, created uh, College of Medicine in Texas and given the authority to grant medical degrees is the University of Houston College of Medicine. And one of the reasons why they were given the authority to, because we've got lots of colleges of medicine in Texas, um, to create a new uh, medical program was they agreed that it would be uh, very aimed at underserved uh, students who wish to become doctors. And so they baked in, they baked in OER from the ground up into their medical programs. And it includes the creation, Stacy, what you mentioned, case studies of medical case studies. Now their challenge that they've expressed to me is going to be updating these, but, but it's, it's so impressive that they've got that baked in from the ground up. And we actually are publishing a case study that is going to feature their work. It's also, by the way, Chris going to focus on, uh, several community colleges that created a um, history text, or I'm sorry, a government text, but it's Texas government, but it, but a government somewhat related. But I think some of the challenges would probably be similar to what, what there are for creating history text. They've worked with Pan Open to create that, that government text, but it's going to feature their work as well, and a um, also a biology professor that uh, works at UTA, UT Arlington. So, but that's very impressive to hear, Stacy. Yeah, and I should have also mentioned I used to work at the University of North Texas. So, oh really? For oh, about five years. Yeah. So, oh, okay. So I'm from Michigan. We're back in Michigan, but I did work <laughs> work down there, and they were actually so impressive. The government documents unit, speaking of government documents, what they were starting to do um, was even when I was there almost 20 years ago, it was really impressive with making the Texas laws, the GAMLs, I think it's GAMLs laws. They made that open because the, the books were too fragile for people to use. So oh, they, but no, and no one library had a whole, an entire copy of all the laws. So they digitized those and made those available. So, oh, wow. so that's not, that's not like quite what we're talking about, but they were really at the forefront of digitizing a lot of government in government documents, luckily without copyright on them, it was a lot easier to, to start with some of that material. Oh, how interesting. And I must say, it must've been quite a cultural shift to go from Michigan to Denton and then 
<laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And I worked at the Fort Worth Public Library too. So uh, I've been, yeah, all over Texas, but we oh. went we went via the southeast and then Texas and then back up north. So, <laughs> <laughs> so but Texas doing good stuff. So it's great to hear. Well, thank you, Stacey. I appreciate it. And I see that Veronica says there's a session on creating test banks at this conference. Oh, excellent. Oh, wonderful. Stacey said we're planning to attend. Um, that's great. Uh, and, you know, I think, and, and I see uh, Thomas's comment that if it's your creation, open license or not, you can't control who views it. You're right. I mean, Thomas, like, like Creative Commons licenses, CC by open licenses are still copyright. It, it is still a form of copyright and it still has, uh, you know, a lot of the same sort of protections that, uh, that any, any sort of copyright would have. And I mean, that's, that, that would include it, Thomas. It, the post might have been kind of more about does this, does this violate the spirit of open or, but Thomas, I think, what were you going to say? Yeah. Um, from, you know, you get back to what podcasts have done. Uh, almost all their content is CC. And, um, um, but then you have Patron, uh, uh, the patron, where you pay for content. And even though they have people paying for content, it's still under the Creative Commons. So, so once, once they're, the, they're, I guess, uh, uh, like I have several friends who do this and, and after a while they, they post the stuff that people had to pay for, they post it out for free. Um, so, so there's control there. You can have some control there as to who can, who can view it. Um, but I understand what you're saying about, um, um, does it fit with the, with the, uh, ideal of, of everything for free? Um, well, if you have a password, it's still going to be for free. Um, it's just, you want to limit it to a certain audience. And, and, you know, yes, yes, I think you're right. I mean, if what gets complicated is if something is CC licensed with the most restrictive license, like a non-commercial share alike, yeah. then you start, then you start getting into some limitations and restrictions. Uh, we, we're always encouraging the, the CC by the most open license. And we, we do that in our own work, but that's not always possible for some people. Well, and then these people creating test banks that they just want uh, uh, instructors to have access to, well, there's, they're not always their own creation. True. So how do you, how do you restrict that if it's not your creation? Yeah, then it gets kind of complicated for yeah, sure. <laughs> convoluted. You have to get permission to be able to do that. So yeah. Yeah. Good point, Thomas. Thank you. Everyone, thank you so much. What a great group. I really appreciate your great questions and discussion. And Shannon, thank you so much for your assistance as moderator. Great job. Thank you for a wonderful kind of session. Oh, Thanks, my Judith. pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the conference. Thank you.